Sometimes when you're trying to make something, things just refuse to go smoothly. This custom storage box turned out great, but boy did it cause me some trouble. So let's look at the design process and also look at why I think I was cursed for this project. I can't be the only one. You're trying to make something, you're in a hurry and maybe a machine breaks down or you can't find that crucial filament you need for the job. This project continually threw spanners in my works. Honestly, at times it was ridiculous. And I invite you to take note of all the things that went wrong and let me know if you've experienced them too in the comments section. It does have some nice features, however, so let's brave my misfortune and see how it all went together. This story begins with me getting a new telescope because I enjoy astronomy. The thing about astronomy is it's a hobby that quickly racks up accessories, whether it be the simple eyepieces that go into the telescope and provide magnification, or things like this brush used to remove dust with the help of the inbuilt blower, and even things like this torch that has a red colour so it doesn't ruin your night vision when you're stargazing. I also recently got this astronomical camera second hand. Unfortunately, poor seeing conditions, but here's some footage of Saturn whizzing by, and in the same conditions, a crescent moon. This device attached to the camera is something I just got and it's called a flip mirror. You could put an eyepiece in the top, flip the mirror up and see what the telescope sees, and then flip the mirror down so the camera can take footage, the best of both worlds. The final item that I want to look after is this solar filter. This is great because now you can do astronomy during the day. Here's some raw footage of the sun from the camera. It looks average here, but when you post process it, you end up with a pretty stunning final image. Obviously, we want this stuff nice and handy so we're not fumbling around in the dark, but all the telescope came with is this holder that holds four objects and that's clearly not going to cut it. Especially when we consider that there's protective caps for whatever it is we're using at the time. This holder slots in place at the base of the telescope, but I reckon if we remove it, we've actually got a pretty useful space to put a much bigger custom storage box after this handle is unscrewed of course. So with that gone, we can start to formulate a plan. The base shape for the storage is a box, and I'll get it as wide as I can to fit within the telescope frame. I also want the whole thing to lock shut with some over-center clasps. Examining how it opens, there'll be a series of flip-out drawers that open in unison, and the hollows inside them will have 3D printed or laser cut foam to hold the parts. And looking from the side to examine packaging, we can see those same part drawers will be at the front, leaving a cavity behind for the solar filter to slide down vertically. There are some other details which I haven't drawn. I want each of the drawers to be linked in one mechanism. A more complicated version of what we're seeing here, where when you open the top lid, the two drawers pivot automatically. And in terms of materials, for the main structure, I'm going to repeat the steps I took when setting up all the drawers in my current studio. Laser cut 7mm plywood, of which I have plenty left over. I've got some black spray paint to cover the plywood, and I've also got some adhesive back felt to cover surfaces as necessary. And of course, there'll be some 3D printed parts while more curvature is necessary. Let's briefly cover the CAD for my initial solution. As we can see, most of the panels are 7mm thick and they're designed to slot together, just like when I made the drawers. I've got this large piece on the back that matches the slots of the original. This will be 3D printed and bolted onto the rear panel. Looking from the side, we can see there's room for the solar filter and then we've got a single drawer on the front here. I also made an assembly for this just so I could test that everything moved properly. We can see that this yellow piece is designed to be 3D printed. That lets me put a fillet on the front so that way when it opens it won't collide with the plywood frame. And I've also put an angle on this top profile so as these two open up they naturally rest against each other and that limits the travel. Joining these two is a 3D printed linkage and I've set up the mates in on shape so that when I move one, the linkage is connected to the other and moves the second one just like it will be in real life. Finally, our top lid has another 3D printed piece at the back with a fillet so it can be opened up. What I'm trying to do here is to be as careful as possible to avoid any design errors that will prevent this from working. And that brings us on to manufacturing. And fortunately, with my CO2 laser cutter, these panels only take around 30 seconds or so each to complete. I then have the satisfying task of pushing them clear of the larger piece of plywood. On the outer panels, there was a quick bit of post-processing needed just to cut a countersink so that my bolts would sit flush and not collide with the telescope's frame. The printed parts were done in PETG on my Prusa XL. 
The parts look pretty good, but most importantly, they were dimensionally accurate, particularly this mounting piece that needs to interface perfectly with the telescope base. Assembly with this method typically involves doing a dry run, just to build up the basic shape, make sure everything fits and give it some rigidity. The 3D printed parts can also be test fit to make sure they're going to slot together properly. It also makes sense at this stage to insert the bolts and take everything through its correct range of motion, just to make sure there's no unexpected binding. Feeling confident, I could now start to pull one piece off, apply some wood glue to the joints, slot the piece back on, hold it in place with a clamp, and then use a series of small nails and only to grease to each other to hold everything in place permanently. Doing this feels like a really satisfying 3D jigsaw puzzle. For the 3D printed parts, I simply laid down a bead of super glue all around the mating surfaces and then slotted the part into its final position. Screwing a bolt into each end helped keep it in the right spot. This first version was actually pretty close to the mark. The linkage for the lower two drawers was working perfectly, there was sufficient space for all of my eyepieces, and just enough width to fit the flip mirror, which was the largest component. I did have one major stuff up, and you can see the back piece of plywood has already been removed here, and that's because it blocked the solar filter from coming out of the box. There wasn't enough room for the solar filter to angle and get past any of these sections. So I jumped back into Onshape and modeled the solar filter, I should have done this from the start, and this oversight really came to bite me. If we lift it up, we can see the back panel of that lid is definitely in the way, but even if we remove it and the printed hinge, there was never enough clearance for the filter to angle over and to be able to exit properly. So a redesign was needed, but honestly, that's not being cursed, that's completely on me. The one thing I didn't 3D model caused the key failure, but as I started to iterate, that's when the curse really set in. The first change is to increase the depth of the box just to give a tiny bit more clearance for the solar filter. I also narrowed the width by 2mm just to make sure it wouldn't scrape the telescope frame, even if that meant I had to reprint all of the hinges. The other key change was to lower the internal divider to give more room to angle the solar filter as it was pulled out. I redesigned the reprinted hinge to have a large cutout in the middle, and then I designed this wedge piece to go on the internal surface just to guide the solar filter over that lip. And matching that, the part that hooks onto the telescope was also redesigned to make it more slimline, and it no longer bolts into the plywood, but instead, these two pieces bolt to each other, sandwiching the plywood in the middle. The first time around, it was clear that some of my plywood was quite warped, and this was affecting the dimensional accuracy. Even when nailed together, we can see that the gaps in the assembly are not consistent at all. The only solution was to buy some fresh plywood and ensure that it was flat. For these projects, I always use the same 7mm ply. It's cheap, easy to get, and when I trim off the last 30cm, the panel left behind is an exact match for the insides of my laser cutter. It is, however, normal plywood and not laser ply, and sometimes that really matters. This became very evident as I started laser cutting all of the new parts. With the old plywood, I could get through with two passes at a reasonable speed. The edge was black, but not charred and still held its shape. And this is what the new plywood looked like after six passes to get through. I had to experiment a lot with different combinations, but this was the best I could get, and as you can see, in the center where the glue is, it's very charred and misshapen. According to the hardware store, these two are the same product. But if we look closely, we can see the old one on top is 5-ply versus 3-ply on the bottom, and there's a distinct visual difference in terms of the glue or binder that holds these layers together. I've heard that when you see a dark glue, that that means a certain type of resin is being used that the laser cutter will hate. My experiences here are consistent with that. Let me know in the comments if you agree. Moving on, these edges at least will be sanded and painted, so visually it's not the end of the world. But thanks to the extra passes, each job was now taking three times as long. But things were about to get worse. As I was making the new parts, I was test fitting them to make sure everything was aligned, and I was particularly relieved to see the new design had plenty of clearance for the solar filter. But as I put the pieces together, it was clear they were a long way from being square. And then the edge quality really went downhill. I mean, those are meant to be circles, but it looks like the machine sneezed as it was cutting them. On the left hand side, I found a loose belt, but as I tried to tension it, it popped out of its mount. This laser cutter has a single stepper for Y, connected to a belt on each side, and these are coupled together with this long shaft along the front. The trouble is, the belts are completely hidden on the underside of this channel, with these linear rods in the way. You can't even reach the retaining bolt with your fingers, let alone see it. So as you can imagine, there was a lot of disassembly of these components to gain access for reattachment. I would have filmed more, but I was too busy swearing. And here's an example of why. 
That linear rod needed to be detached to get the belts fixed, but afterwards it wasn't quite aligned and that made it keep binding as I tried to home the machine. So this too needed adjustment, and at the front, no problem. A little access hole with the bolts not far behind. But as for the back, well, let me take you on a journey. We have to open this whole rear panel, but it's not behind that, it's up and around the corner from that. And as you can see, the two bolts are a fair way from the back of the machine. So while there is an access hole, none of my tools were long enough to reach. So tired, fed up, and working late into the night, I had to contort myself into the gap behind the laser cutter. Reach up into the void to the two bolts from one side, while trying to use the other hand, unsighted, to align the rod with where I think it needed to be. It took a few cycles to get everything working, and it wasn't fun at any stage. The machine was working again, but the gantry was no near square, so cue more calibration. And finally, after a fair bit of trial and error, I finally got it perfect. I really like that laser cutter, but it is not fun to work on. Guess what? Because none of the parts were square from the second batch, I had to start all over again for the third time. At least, after all of my tinkering, the laser cutting was working as well as it ever has since I've owned it. As I had already gone through so much material, I was getting pretty good at reusing pieces, cutting slightly smaller parts that just fit within them. So it really didn't help when I lost some parts when we had a 5 minute power outage partway through the cutting job. I guess we just add that mishap to the list. Even so, I was really on a roll now, and got to work enthusiastically nailing the frame back together. Some of the nails tried to lean over and extend the curse, but I held my nerve and saw them through to the end. And my reward for all of this toil was a storage box that was perfectly square and perfectly straight. I tried to be thorough by testing as much as I could as I went along, and it turned out to be a good choice that the whole box was 2mm narrower, as I'm not sure it would have fit with the original width without a lot of sanding. I was actually cutting and assembling the frame before all of the other parts were designed, so some were created as I went, like these two little lips to stop caps from falling off the top shelf, and this temporary piece that I called the chin strap. Its job was to raise the solar filter about 10mm when the lid opened, just to make it a little bit easier to grab. But in the end I scrapped it, because I could get just as good a result by wedging some leftover packaging foam down the bottom, and having the filter fit on it at the perfect height. The first versions of the design only had a link between the two front drawers, but I wanted the final version to have all three linked together to open as one. Designing an upper shape that matched the profile I needed was probably the hardest part, and I switched to the assembly and would move the top lid bit by bit, followed by the link connected to the drawers to keep everything aligned, and keep observing parts of the opening seen here in the yellow part, looking for ways to cut down and simplify the shape. After ditching the chin strap, this became a lot simpler task, and it wasn't long until I had refined the shape to make it as small as possible, but still clear everything. It was a big relief when the final part was sent to the printer. Although I should note, this wasn't the first printer I chose for it, because another one decided it wanted to reboot halfway through the print and ruin it. The hole for the final design was also in a different spot to the one I had previously laser cut, so I 3D printed this little jig that I could hold against the edge and get the new holes in the exact location which was critical. This was my final dummy run, with a link only installed on one side, and as you can see it was a little bit jerky but it did work absolutely perfectly. And my reward was stripping back off all the plastic parts so I could then paint the plywood. And of course it was now raining and I had to delay my painting for a day. The goats hate getting wet, so they weren't happy about this either. I waited for a break in the weather, and set up a tarp on top of a wet outdoor table, and spent around 30 seconds sanding each piece. If you're new to the channel, I absolutely hate sanding, and I'll avoid it as much as I can. I'm also a very impatient painter, so I whizzed through this as well, and it's amazing that I didn't butcher it. The finish is exactly what I was after. You can still see the texture of the plywood, and it looks more stained than painted. That type of effect matches the base of the telescope. I had undertaken considerable growth as a maker, but now the finish line was in sight. Final assembly, and that meant doing things like gluing the printed hinges into their final position. Again, I used the screws temporarily to keep everything aligned. The ramp to guide the solar filter was reinstalled, but this time around it was lined with felt to protect the filter. This was my plan all along, and it was super satisfying to finally get this in place. I used the offcut from that piece to line the other side, and reinstalled the foam spacer. I also used some foam to line the top shelf. The purpose of this section is really only to hold the caps while I'm using them, but having the felt here looks super neat. Because of the links on the side, the drawers need to be installed as a single unit. This means installing a connecting link on one side, flipping over the drawers, installing the second link, 
and then carefully sliding the set inside the main housing. To get the clearances perfect, I designed these little printed plastic spaces, and the easiest way to get everything aligned is a narrow screwdriver, and then holding things properly in position by inserting the final bolt. With one side done, we flip the whole thing over and repeat. We can then put the box the right way up, and preview the motion by lifting the links up and down on each side. To make sure the lid didn't slam shut without permission, I designed in holes for magnets at the top of the link. I then marked and drilled some holes for larger magnets in the outside of the box. Once these larger magnets were pressed in and flush with the inside, whenever the links are raised to the top, the magnets will attract and hold them there. With the magnets done, the top lid can then be angled into position. There's another set of spaces here and the same type of bolt to act as the pivot point. The final step is installing those clasps from the original plan. The top drawer was resting slightly inside where I wanted, so I decided to install the clasps, overlapping the frame slightly to limit the inward travel of the drawer. To get them to match from left to right, I designed and printed another little jig. This would hold them in the perfect position while I marked where I needed to drill. And once all of the bits were screwed on, I could adjust the length until I was happy with the tension. But there was one more hurdle. The bolts that I used were longer than the plywood's thickness, and that gave me a little bit of tidying up to do on the inside. I tried to trim these in place using a flush cut saw, but all I managed to do was mangle the teeth on one of my blades. The solution was to unscrew one bolt at a time, trim them down, file the ends and reinstall. And that brings us to a demonstration of the finished product. First and foremost, it actually fits on the telescope, which if I didn't narrow the design was not guaranteed. I could have done the painting better, but I still think it looks pretty tidy. The clasps hold it shut, and if you wanted to, you could add a padlock to keep your bits secure. And once they're opened, we simply pull up on the top lid and everything else happens automatically. The magnets seem to be doing a good job of stopping it from slamming shut by accident. And when we're finished, again, we just push down on the lid and everything will shut, ready to clasp, which should keep the valuable content safe and clean during transport. I'm really pleased with how this finished up. Actually, it's not quite finished yet. At the moment, I've temporarily got some foam inside the drawers until I design some proper holding pieces, and I want to actually use it during the night time to see if anything else needs changing, but of course, the weather has set in and I won't be doing that anytime soon. Anyways, could you relate to my frustrating mishaps? Let me know in the comments section your most cursed projects. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy persevering through frustrating projects. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.